Hello, my name is Bettina Cuneo. Uh, I am a physician at the Colorado Fetal Care Center and in the Heart Institute at Children's Hospital Colorado. I'm the Director of Fetal Cardiology and Fetal Cardiac Telemedicine. Today I'd like to present a case to you of a very interesting fetus who presented initially with ostensibly normal rhythm but was found to have a very severe defect. This fetus was the first of its kind to be treated successfully in utero and undergo a term delivery. This baby presented first at 24 weeks of gestation with normal heart rates. Previously, the heart rates had varied between 110 and 70 beats per minute. The family history was inconclusive because both parents were adopted. The mother had had a previous pregnancy which was normal and genetic testing results on the baby were normal. No diagnosis or intervention was performed as the fetus was vigorous and growing normally. The baby continued to be followed until 32 weeks of gestation when she presented with a heart rate of 240 beats per minute and high drops or severe fetal heart failure. At another institution, she was treated for supraventricular tachycardia, which is a much more common type of tachycardia, but she didn't respond and things got worse. She was sent to us for a second opinion and found not to have supraventricular tachycardia, but ventricular tachycardia, which is a much more different type of arrhythmia. The combination of her early arrhythmias, that is the bradycardia with the rates of 110 to 70 beats per minute, combined with the ventricular tachycardia were very suggestive of long QT syndrome. Long QT syndrome is an inherited channelopathy and can also present de novo, that is without any family history. We were very concerned about this baby and did not want to deliver early, especially because the baby was in the life-threatening ventricular tachycardia. So we decided to treat. Mother was admitted to the CICU and treated as though she had the tachycardia. And we knew the lidocaine and magnesium which we would give would pass through the placenta and hopefully restore normal rhythm in the fetus. We were very lucky. The fetus responded to the medication and the high drops resolved. The mother remained in the cardiac intensive care unit with a labor and delivery nurse standing by just in case. The mother was able to carry the baby till term. She was born normally and then she was found to have a deleterious variant, an SCN5A, a de novo variant which was not found in her parents or her brother. After birth, she responded nicely to treatment. And this case was the first case of a long QT fetus treated successfully in utero and surviving to be born at term. For more information about our care of this patient or any other patient with arrhythmias, please visit our website. Thank you.